Yo. Yeah. I work a long day, but it's worth it knowing when I get home I can relax and let the songs play First I check my account, see that I got paid Then pour myself a tall one and neck the lot straight Hey, what's going on everybody? Mala here. How are you guys doing today? I've had the watch active on my wrist for quite a while since the actual launch together with the S10 Plus and it's been a really good companion so far. But why stop to talk about it now that the V2 has come out? Well, that's a good question and one that I feel like I should have a better answer to, but I'll just ask you guys to remove your conspiracy hats because this is not a day for hating on technology. It's just a matter of fact that I think the V2 is not worth the upgrade if you already have the OG watch active. Secondly, I've been surprised with the amount of conversations I've had with friends lately that never used smartwatches before, have no idea of what they are and what to expect of one, but since Black Friday is fast approaching, they're probably just thinking about either getting one as a present for someone else or even for themselves. And I guess it's also just good thinking to try and get a grip on all of this before the actual offers run in and you have to make a decision. Now, since I know that's not the case with everybody watching this video, I'm just gonna leave this timestamp so that you can click if you wanna skip the basics. And this is definitely not have been added in post. All right, what the hell does it do? Well, the best smartwatches in the market right now are the Apple Watch Series 5, I even argue the 4 because it's probably gonna have a better battery life, but anyway, and the Galaxy Watch family. Not only the active ones, but also the Galaxy Watch and even the Gear S3, which have been around for a couple of years already. And all of them in general, together with basically every other competitor, have one very major focus in common, attention to health and well-being, which means Tons of apps to be able to monitor your health, your heart rate, how many calories have you burned, how is your water intake, how have you been sleeping, and even your exercise habits. Now aside from all of that, if those things are not your cup of tea, what a smartwatch can actually do is manage notifications from every single app on your phone, or at least most of them. And that can be a little convenient, but also very, 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 very annoying and distracting, possibly killing off your battery kind of faster than it would if you didn't have that many active notifications being pumped right at your wrist all the time. They can also, of course, be used with different apps that are made either for them or counterparts to your phone's app, like weather, payment stuff like Samsung Pay in the case of this little guy, seeing photos from your phone's gallery direct on the watch, listen to music, answer and make calls, give orders to your favorite assistant, and if you can't believe it, on top of all that, it also tells you the time. I know, that's nuts. Okay, so what then? For people who have grown accustomed to using their phone in their pockets with a normal regular watch on their wrists, what would you actually be getting with one of these guys that you already don't have since most if not everything that this can do, your phone also can. Yeah, it is convenient not to have to take your phone out of your pocket to check if that notification is from something that you should be giving attention to at that moment or not, but it's not exactly something that I feel is that life-changing for most people. And yeah, it is pretty damn cool that something this small on your wrist can alert emergency contacts if you end up taking a fall and alert you if you have some weird stuff going on with your heart rate and help you keep your health in check. But I'm all but certain that most of this came out from the same realization we just got to a minute ago. Why would and how much would anybody be willing to pay for a smartwatch that would just basically make it a tad more convenient sometimes to check notifications since everything else that it can also do aside from all the health things your phone can already do and better and that's kind of the whole gist so if you guys had zero clue what a smartwatch can do or not now at least you have all the information to be able to understand what it's supposed to be doing for you and if you would be even able to take advantage of all of that Now, let's actually talk about the watch active and the V2 just for kicks, cause why not, right? So first things first, what actually differentiates one from the other? Well, the V2 has an updated sensor array on its back that's supposed to be better and more precise with measuring all of those heart and health things. 
together with giving you the option to get yourself an ECG on the go if you so desire. Now, two things important to note here. First, shout out to the guys that copied the ECG thing from the Apple Watch, and I'm not hating on that because it's really, really flipping cool that you can have something like that and on your wrist through something as small as a watch. And it's awesome that the Android side of things finally get access to it. But secondly, that ECG thing is not exactly in the V2 already because it depends on a software update to roll it down the road. Now to put that center array and all those options on your wrist, the V2 comes in two different sizes, a new bigger 44 millimeter version and another 40 millimeter just like the OG. But doesn't matter the size you decide to go with, you kind of have to say goodbye to the beautiful dark green color that the OG Watch Active brought to the table and it was so damn good looking. Now you get the same three colors, black, silver or gray, and rose gold either on the Bluetooth or LTE versions and both sizes. With the only difference between the LTE and Bluetooth versions being a little bit of a different hue and a more glossy finish on the LTEs. Another big thing they've changed for the V2 is on something that everybody loved about the Galaxy Watch Active line, which was the physical ring, the bezel that could be rotated to navigate through the menus and actually use the watch. And Samsung, in a bold but apparently misguided move, stripped that away from the OG Active Watch, but probably because of the backlash or maybe just to be able to differentiate the V1 from the V2 even more, they kind of brought it back, but not in the same way, because now instead of a physical dial around the display, you have the bezels actually being a capacitive ring. And the last big difference, which is definitely not something I think has anything to do with hardware on the V2, is the fact that you can use the new app to take photos of anything, and the app will turn on that photos into patterns that you can use as wallpapers for your smartwatch, which I know are called watch faces. And that's it. That's actually kind of really it. Aside from these three things, everything that was good about the OG Active Watch is still here, and from every other thing that they could have improved upon, they basically focused on stuff that are kind of just for show. The OG Watch Active already had around three days worth of battery life for me with a bunch of notifications during the day, and that's awesome. But the V2, even with a bigger model, hasn't really improved in any major way on battery life, hence why Samsung has already stated that it's kind of largely unchanged in that aspect. Both of them are water resistant enough so that you can take a plunge in the pool and actually swim around, even getting to use them to help you get your pacing in the water a little bit better and higher up. Integration between the watch and all the Samsung ecosystem and anything Android is actually just the same as with the OG, so no difference between them. And finally, both the OG and the V2 are smaller, lighter, and less of a hassle to use on your wrist every day compared to the bigger brothers of the Galaxy Watch and the Gear S3, which is awesome because it makes the experience of actually using it kind of like it's not even there. A couple of minutes with it on your wrist and you're probably going to forget that it's there unless you're actually getting buzzed from notifications. That alone made using it a breeze. And since I also got accustomed to actually managing which apps would be able to notify me through the watch either way, I could be certain that only stuff that could actually have important notifications would buzz me on my wrist. Everything else, all the crap that you get from all of those other apps you never really use, get swept off to the side and do not intrude. Largely, what I can say about smartwatches in general is that they have helped me make some aspects of my day-to-day -day life more convenient while also getting me to be a little bit more attentive to my health. And that's something you really can't complain about. So all that puts together a picture of what it is like to actually live with a smartwatch on your wrist all the time, which is definitely not a case of an accessory that's just gonna try and make a couple of stuff on your life a little bit more convenient, but will actively demand that you make a couple of changes to your day-to-day -day routine in order to be able to be more active and put all those health things in check for good use. And in the end, you're definitely also gonna be better for it, even if just a little bit. The issue here for me is that the three biggest differences between the Watch Active and the V2 are not significant enough when you look at the big picture to merit an $80 upgrade. 
And that's when you're getting from 199 to 279 between the two 40 millimeter Bluetooth versions, which gets me to thinking that the 299 non LTE version of the 44 millimeter, once you actually add on everything you can, that's maybe even going to come close to the $400 mark. And now you guys know both what you can and can't expect from something like this. But as always, even if you already think that you won't be able to take advantage of all of that, of all of what these things can do, I'd still highly suggest you at least make an effort and try it out. Because who knows, maybe you'll find yourself fighting to close off rings and beat calories and do better and stay more active. And again, at the end, the only one actually benefiting from that is you. So I hope this video was helpful, that you enjoyed it, and if so, get down to the comment section and do let me know. And just like those watches that can also tell the time, surprise everyone with a like, subscribe, and nuke that bell right in the face to be notified of new videos coming up, which are going to be getting to you on your wrist if you got one of these guys. That's been it, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.